So we might get started. Um, I will declare the meeting of the Adelaide Parklands Authority of Thursday the 2nd of July open um, and advise that the meeting of the board will be streamed live to the City of Adelaide website and a recording will also be published to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording has been taken at this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council in including transfer outside of Australia. Acknowledgement of country. Adelaide Parklands Authority acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who may be present with us today. Item two on the agenda is apologies. We have several apologies this evening. Um, our Deputy Presiding Member, um, Ms. Kirstine Mackay, um, Board Members, Ms. Jessica davies Hone and Mr. Stephen Forbes. Um, and I haven't received an apology from the Deputy Lord Mayor, but I know that he isn't present as yet. I think he's on his way. Mm -hmm. uh, members, confirmation of the minutes. Uh, this is from 4th of June and also the 18th of June 2020. I will seek a mover and a seconder to confirm the minutes. Thank you, Stephanie. And a seconder. Thank you, Craig. Um, are there any questions or alterations to the minutes? No. If not, um, I'll ask that the minutes be confirmed. We go to the vote, please. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, presiding members report. Um, I don't really have an report, a report other than to thank members for, for um, the meeting that we had so long ago, um, <laughs> yesterday, uh, which is a, a part of our strategic planning. Um, it was great to have uh, such conversations and I think we're on our way. Um, we'll obviously continue to do that and then bring it back in through um, the, the board meeting once we've finished with that work. Um, but again, thank you for your contribution and look forward to continuing with that work. Um, the Executive Officer Report, Mr Cook. Thank you. Um, just before I begin talking about the uh, Parkland Management Strategy, uh, I just want to remind people about that, uh, that form that I sent around uh, the declaration form, just to remind you that needs to be in by the 10th July. Thank you, Alison. Alison's very Okay, this, uh, this section is, is part of our regular review of the uh, Department's Management Strategy. We look at a different section each month. This month, we're going to look at the Objectives and the Big Moves section. So I sent this around, you might have had time to look at it, but there's not, there's not a lot, of, lot to digest. Um, the Objectives section was derived from the uh, statutory principles in, in the Adelaide Parklands Act, so we needed to make sure that what was being proposed in the strategy was consistent with those statutory principles. So we we played around with them. We uh, we distilled them down into what we think are good representative um, statements about those statutory statutory principles, and we think they're a lot more you know, a lot more user friendly than those in the Act. So, did anyone have any um, you know, standout points to, with those? That, um, they seem all right, generally. Okay, so we may not need to change those. Um, the big moves section is split into two areas. Thank you. So they're the. Um, they're the seven objectives. The big move section is split into two. Uh, one section 
around the um, the big projects that were anticipated to occur in the parklands, and then another series of big moves which are more around landscape improvements. So, first of all, the uh, the projects. Would people like me to work through them and just to give you some idea of how they've been tracking whether the yes, yes, progress. progress. Yeah. So in terms of the first one, the master plans for the squares, of course we have a, we do now have a master plan for Whitmore Square. The, uh, the master plan for Victoria Square was finalised prior to the strategy. So um, that's largely reflected in terms of the stage one of that project. Um, and now we have a master plan for Whitmore Square. And we've just received some money to start the first stage of that. So the first stage will be a, the construction of a, a, a park perimeter path around the square and some tree planting around the edge too. So that's more or less on the way. The um, cityscape plaza, of course it is not occurring in the in the riverbank precinct. But um, there's a lot of current site works, investigatory site works yeah, occurring in Park 25 at the end of Hindley Street there, around whether we can uh, construct that facility there. Um, a new market, Urban Park. So this is Park 25. This is the redevelopment of that area, that area around the, uh, the SACA facility on those playing fields. So that's largely been done. Well, it has been done, and, and now it's being complemented in, in a way by the construction of the uh, skate park in that same area. People's Park at the West. Now, this was um, slated to occur in Park 24, and while there have been some sporting improvements, I think we uh, went on a site visit there, we saw the new building, and there's been some improvements to the uh, playing fields there. That, that project largely hasn't eventuated. The um, BMX and Youth Activity Hub in Park 20, that has, um, as, as occurred, we saw it down there the other week. The interesting thing about that one is that the, um, the city tree type certainly wasn't, it wasn't envisaged as part of the strategy that occurred simultaneously but not separately. So um, that will contribute to that, that hub there quite nicely. Byron Veal hasn't, hasn't eventuated because largely I think because Veal Gardens is a pretty nice area anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it probably doesn't need a lot of improvement, although there is room for some. Something came down there though, didn't it? Did that, was that glass house? Thing? Yes, of course. The yeah, conservatory, the old yeah. 1960s conservatory. So, was removed. Removed. Yeah. Yeah. so that was probably all the things you had. And that's, that's been a big improvement. Yeah. Mm. Thanks for reminding me. And Central Park in South, so this is Park 19, that has happened. So it's about $5.4 million spent in Park 19 on the, uh, on the new play space, the dog parks, a lot of associated landscaping, uh, all the way down to Queen Hill Road, where there's a nice entry state there. Victoria Park. That's about two things mainly, the wetlands, which we just recently spoken about, and also a all abilities play space, which has moved now from there to Lionel Park. You're all familiar with the Tabina <coughs> and inclusive play space. Reimagine Rymel, well, we have a master plan for that. Northern Activity Hub, that's occurred in part. Uh, along the Prospect Road uh, entrance into the city. So either side of that has been a lot of landscaping work, uh, the creation of a small hub on the western side of Prospect Road, and um, that, that work's still underway. The other section of the big moves is around, around the landscaping. Um, first of all, the great connections. Um, there have been some great connections. There's been um, some path work along South Terrace from Park 21 West down Anzac Highway. That's, um, 
that's what we're doing. Quite good. Um, there's been a new bikeway pedestrian path constructed in Park Two on the uh, eastern side of Jeffcott Terrace in the Aquatic Centre. Um, and of course, there's been a new bikeway constructed uh, part of the North South Bikeway along on Frome Road. Um, the urban address, there's been a small, a couple of small examples of that occurring on um, South Terrace uh, in, along the frontage of Park 20 and more notably perhaps along Sir Donald Bradman Drive, the, the entry statement to Sir Donald Bradman Drive off West Terrace extending down along that road yeah, has made some big improvements there. <laughs> Um, promenade, we haven't constructed any promenades. I think you know that if we have, because we've got quite large landscape features. Um, the Parklands Trail, of course, we've got, we have done some small improvements in Park 20. You might have noticed those for a week when we're down there. And we do have a, an upgrade plan in place um, with some funding applications for uh, crossing points on major roads. I'm just trying to comment there that yep. I don't know whether you've ever consulted with Keith Conlon who takes bike rides in the time. He's got some pretty strong opinions about where those crossings should go. Right, no, I haven't. It might be worth just checking out their yeah. line and what's happening. Hmm. I've been walking the Parkland's Trail a lot too. I keep taking photographs of where I get lost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm lost again. Yeah. But you can't get too lost. You know, no, you're in the part-time studies. No, okay, I don't know where we go now. Okay. Yeah, it's possible. Um, of course, we'll hear from Jason when um, we Wayfinding interpretive signage, we've we put in a lot, probably uh, more than 100 or so different interpretive signs around the place to draw people's attention to heritage features and other things and help them understand them. Um, I mean, in terms of a hundred mini hubs, well, I can think of one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one. Where's okay. that's the one I mentioned earlier on the uh, western side of Prospect Road. Uh, restored and reimagined riparian corridors. Well, there's been a good example of that in Park 17. There's been uh, a big uh, section of creek improvements there, and that built on the earlier improvements in uh, Park 19 as well. Artwork. Um, we we have one on in well virtually in construction in Park 19 again some there's some garden artwork occurring in there. Lights there's been lots of small pro small lighting projects uh, occurring around the place and um, Whitmore Square, Hurdle Square, um, under the Norfolk Street Bridge, in Benitham Park on the western. side side of the river, there's some path lighting on there, um, and either side of Hutton Road towards South Terrace, the parts 17 and 18 in the side of there. What ever happened, Martin, to, um, you know, there was a proposal for, uh, not Brian Park, Elder Park, that came through outflow, but then I think it sort of got controversial at council level. It did. Did it just get smashed out or is it still a... Not entirely. There was some work that occurred there, but no, not on the scale that it was originally. Before. So it's kind of dissipated. And, mm. yeah. Yeah. and of course now we have the lighting strategy as well. Um, in terms of avenues, I think um, the examples of that are, again, Prospect Road, those, those landscaping works are running there and <coughs> along sort of Donald Bradman Drive. So that gives you some of the progress that's been made. Um, members, is there anything you want to? But we'll go in this in more detail when we do the workshop on the parklands management strategy, of course, but just as an update. Um, uh, and again, just to uh, in terms of the Elm carriageway that was brought to my attention by Gary Lott from Hart Street, which I went and sort of explored on the weekend, which is quite magnificent actually. And I think that that 
that's perhaps some, an area that we could have a look at, both from a historical perspective, but just to make it more of an attraction. It, it is quite magnificent and uh, a huge part of our history. So, um, Gary, who I didn't realise had done a lot of work in terms of the history of that area, um, like um, might invite him to come and talk to us about that as well. Sometimes it was fascinating. Um, so, members, with that, uh, we will thank you. Thank you, Martin. That was a great update. Um, if we can go to item six. Um, so, we have one deputation tonight, uh, which we have granted, which is to Kelly Henderson. Uh, Ms. Henderson, um, you are invited to come forward and speak to the board for a period of up to five minutes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I haven't received any confirmation that my deputation has been approved. So this is the first I knew about. So I haven't been given the uh, So I've just been advised that that was emailed this morning. So um, there was no email provided on my deputation application on your phone number because I don't have internet access. So um, my application uh, requested for a PowerPoint presentation. Is it possible to put these images up? Uh, no, we did actually discuss that. I believe that you were we were happy to accept a handout, but we don't do PowerPoints with deputations. I don't have a handout. I'm sorry, well, I can't the accept the PowerPoint. Just images, so can I have these? Please? Uh, no, I think that was actually discussed at the time of your application for the deputation, at which point we said we don't uh, allow PowerPoints with deputations. Very happy for a handout, but unfortunately I can't do that. Okay, we'll hand this out. And I'll have to ask the Secretariat to, to um, go and obtain a colour copy of my document, which I'll provide to the Customer Centre. Um, there's an error in my deputation application. It should say a general item 8.1, so I apologise for that. I had a great deal of difficulty in getting any notice of the board meeting. So the thing I want to raise under the, the minutes point is that I still do not have the minutes of the board's last meeting. As someone that's like particularly interested in this committee and its work, I want to bring to your attention that the, the public are not being properly notified of your meetings. There is still no agenda posted on the council notice board for this meeting, so the public um, who are going past are not even being reminded that this meeting is on. People like me who don't have this access um, won't know that the meeting is on. Um, I thought there was a mandatory requirement for notifications to be put on the council notice board on its main place of business. And although I raised this last Friday, I still do not have the agenda or minutes for your last meeting on the 18th of June. But it is a matter that is very, very significant because I think it is uh, totally um, illegitimate what is proposed. And this board, if it has any experts on it who care for their reputation or for the parklands, they should stand up immediately and speak out to the council and the government against the Brown Hill Creek Keswick project. And I would beg you to allow me to make a presentation to this council in the way that you allow other people to make presentations with PowerPoint so that I can provide an opposing view from somebody who knows the history of the parklands and who was presented on the world heritage values of the parklands, including peer reviewed papers at international conferences. So I believe that the meetings that have been held and the deliberations of this board have failed to provide um, proper notification to the public. The agendas and minutes are not available. I still don't have those for the last meeting on the 8th of June. And with difficulty, it was with difficulty that I got agendas and, and of this meeting. So um, I raised that as an issue. Um, 7.1, I'm speaking against there being any of these sorts presentation with respect to the gentleman in the public gallery who's very, very passionate. Um, this board is um, in effect by taking these presentations, not informing itself on matters on which it has to deliberate. What it's taking is um, unsolicited proposals from anywhere and everywhere about urbanisation and development. I think that that's highly inappropriate and it shouldn't be caused, suffered or permitted. Um, the proper forum for those things is 
perhaps a public um, public forum to Adelaide City Council, um, but it's not to do with the protection, nor is it to do with the conservation of the parklands, which is what this board is specifically tasked with under the Act. It is not about conservation of the parklands and it is not about protection of the parklands. And this is just one instance. The Aqua Board has, has countenance many such submissions about development, urbanisation of parklands, all in the absence, it's especially egregious in the absence of any natural heritage conservation management plan or any cultural heritage conservation plan. These things, which should be considered um, the benchmark, the starting point to inform a board such as this about how to protect and how to conserve the parklands, don't exist. Because the Adelaide City Council and the government have never carried out this basic fundamental investigation with independent experts. The CLMPs that you look at are totally unacceptable for that purpose. What they are is merely a, 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 a framework or an indication of how the parklands are going to be damaged. And I don't tell you the whole truth because what happens is the council goes along in the background, uh, gives out new leases to sites on the parklands without meeting the mandatory requirements and under the local government. <laughs> get presented with a new CLMP. Um, so I would like the opportunity... So we'll just give you a, a, a one you. minute of extra time because there was a, a little bit of introductory, but after that, I'm afraid your time's up. Thank you. So the maps that I wanted to present to you and the, the presentation I'd like to make to you at another time, um, at the next meeting if possible, in how there is no Parklands Creek in the South Parklands, and you've been misled, including in this meeting, there's no such thing. What there is is a man-made stormwater drain, which is an example of evidence of damage to the parklands. And that should not be caused, suffered, or permitted to be enhanced. There's been no riparian restoration in South Parklands. What there's been is a massive amount of damage to the natural landscape and the natural environment and the natural heritage of the parklands. Moving on to point eight point two, I speak against the change to the gluttony footprint. Um, because this council has a contract with gluttony, which they um, are intending to ignore by establishing a new parkland, it's no reason for the parklands to provide a new space for gluttony. That's something that gluttony should slog out with the council. Um, what they're talking about taking over in part of Grime Lake and the old part of Ali site is totally unconscionable and should not be condoned by this board. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Uh, members, that takes us on to item seven on the agenda tonight. Um, I'm going to invite Jason Redmond to come forward and speak on the Adelaide Rainbow Circuit, um, which is an Adelaide Parklands Trail. Um, Jason, you have, I think we've got about up to 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Raul. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, I've got that. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, uh, thank you for the opportunity to come and speak to you all. Um, and I very much appreciate Kelly's contribution as well uh, with regards to having a vision for, for our parklands and, um, and being able to. Uh, I I guess uh, I have a vision that everybody, uh, the, the entire community, including uh, our, our council, can be attached to and, and really embrace um, for what we can do um, with something which is incredibly unique globally um, um, uh, for, for our parklands. And, and this slide here really talks to that, and it is around uh, developing an internationally recognisable South Australian icon they cannot be replicated in any other uh, city in the world. We we'll definitely encourage um, and promote our lifestyle and our identity here in, in South Australia. Uh, we'll offer very much a essential um, uh, tourism experience, although these days that's relatively complicated. Um, and also be considerate of our heritage, both our natural heritage, but also our Aboriginal heritage and our colonial heritage. And that's that's what I'd like to talk to you all about uh, today. Uh, I come here as a, as a, 
a citizen of, of South Australia. I have no other ulterior motive whatsoever. I am not here as any uh, my, my substantive role as a salesperson um, or anything similar to that effect. I, I come up with an idea. It is something that I have spoken to a lot of people about and I've had very positive responses on and that's what I'd like to hear, uh, here to talk to you about today. The concept is extremely simple. It is extremely simple. It is to look at a continuous shared walk, run, bike, track that circumnavigates our city. It is something which is extremely unique to our city. It cannot be replicated anywhere else globally. Uh, it is to utilise our parklands for recreation. It is to utilise our parklands for activity. And, and, and that's effectively what the concept is. However, there is a need to be able to um, incorporate um, various aspects of our heritage, including our Aboriginal heritage, but also our colonial heritage, and be able to link those uh, pieces together. Um, so it would feature an Aboriginal Dreamtime inspired surface, but also incorporate um, modern technology and also a whole stack of uh, native landscape surrounds uh, as well. It takes into account five notable um, areas. And the reason that we've named this the Adelaide Rainbow Circuit is obviously it's representative of our great city of Adelaide. But, but the Rainbow Circuit element of it is, is all about um, incorporating the Rainbow Serpent uh, Dreamtime theme from Aboriginal heritage, and also the fact that it's a circuit and and the fact that it, uh, it would navigate our, our great city. The Aboriginal heritage component of it is, um, uh, is to look at the, the fact that the, the, dream storm, that the dream time story of the Rainbow Serpent talks around um, uh, the movement of the body of the Rainbow Serpent around creating mountains and our riverways and our valleys throughout, um, uh, throughout our, our whole country. I do identify with the fact that that is not necessarily completely linked to gun culture, and there are elements of that to walk through, and there's a, there is there's still a lot of work to do in that area. Um, I have spoken to a number of uh, people in the in the gun community, and they have seen some representation there, but there's still a lot of work to be done. The second aspect is around our Colonel Light's vision um, of being able to use our parklands as intended, and that is as a recreational leisure and enjoyment um, um, uh, concept, I guess, for our for our city. It, this uh, the circuit itself would connect all of our notable uh, sites around um, around Adelaide, our zoo, our botanic gardens. And I'm sure everyone in this in this room would be very familiar with all that sites around our great city. But the next two aspects are quite important, and that is our active, health, healthy lifestyle. This, this, this part for me has gravity. It has, it has um, a way of being able to, 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 to really represent what, what South Australia is all about. Why do you live in Adelaide? I live in Adelaide for the fact of the lifestyle that it affords me. And, and to be able to represent that in, in, in something in our city, I think I think has gravity. So the uh, the idea here is to is to be able to develop something that promotes activity. Um, it very much would keep us in the in the top ten most livable cities in in in, uh, in the world, um, and, uh, and, to, and and promote that healthy lifestyle. The the final point there is around our infrastructure and tourism plans. These are more South Australian government plans, uh, the recent uh, infrastructure plan, but also our tourism plan of being able to provide very unique experiences um, uh, for visitors to our state, uh, but also the fact that our infrastructure plan is looking at ways and means to be able to influence uh, bicycle infrastructure and running infrastructure and activity infrastructure uh, within our state. The circuit itself, uh, please don't take my crude way of being able to draw a map around our city, um, but the, the, the circuit itself is a, uh, in, the, in the first phase, we'd be able to connect all of our existing parklands around um, the CBD itself. 
Um, then phase two would be to be able to extend it up into our northern parklands and phase three would be to start to look at the complete linear park connection uh, both in, from, uh, from, from coast to hills. The idea is to look at a uniform two-way track uh, for pedestrian cycle activity. It is also to, to look at, and, and probably the, uh, the larger, largest expense item for this is to look at over and underpasses for, um, for road crossings and torrents uh, over, the, over the river torrents. Um, but, um, uh, but also to be able to incorporate our, our, our na native landscapes around um, and there is the opportunity very much so for stage releases of this thing, which I think is quite important, particularly with the, with the current, um, uh, uh, I guess, economic environment that we live in. The surface itself would be looking at an Aboriginal dream time uh, and visually healing, uh, which is done throughout the world at the moment, um, uh, not necessarily from an Aboriginal Dreamtime perspective, but to be able to look at these inspired and, and, and graphically and pure, uh, appealing style services, um, to include recycled and sustainable materials, uh, include our wayfinding and interpretive signage, both digitally and physically, um, and incorporate very innovative ideas which are, are used throughout the throughout the world at the moment around ways of being able to use light projection on on uh, on these type these types of services. Excuse me. Uh, I work in the technology field, so this part is very uh, is, is very much uh, close to me. But being able to integrate modern technology. Um, whether it be uh, uh, social media technology or application technology, but also being able to use Wi-Fi systems and CCTV, uh, CCTV systems to be able to incorporate a level of safety and interaction um, and experience really that, uh, that could occur around the circuit. Um, um, uh, I, I, I personally believe would be, uh, would be, would, would be brilliant. This slide here is really to talk about, uh, is to really, every, every person in the room here to be able to sort of just really just take a step back and, and think about what it would be like for a visitor or a citizen uh, here in, in South Australia. The, the visitor experience here is to be able to look at that whole bucket list experience, to be able to come to our city and to be able to experience something which is, is, is extremely unique, to be able to either go 12 kilometres or potentially up to 20 k's. Uh, of uh, of a, a very unique experience in our city would be would be quite unbelievable. We have a very unique un, uh, flight path into our city, which goes over, over basically past our city. To be able to see that either during the day, but particularly during the evening experience, would be um, uh, and to be able to overlook um, uh, something that that, that really represents. Um, uh, our lifestyle um, would be would be quite amazing. The whole jump on free bike park hopping opportunity here is 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 amazing. I've got a number of representatives from uh, whether it be the the, um, the the running associations or the bike associations around two and under stages or Adelaide Marathon or the um, uh, Mother's Day Classic, you name it, um, be able to use those types of events on this type of, uh, 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 this type of platform would be quite amazing. For the citizen, it is all about our active lifestyle. It is about getting the person who's either an early bird or the lunchtime um, active person to be able to get out and use our parklands as intended for recreation. Um, and I think that is extremely important. But for me personally, it's all about the, the family excursion. It's all about getting my kids out there riding and, 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 uh, and, and experiencing our city. That's, that's, um, that's what this thing is all about. I have been overwhelmed by the sheer amount of um, supporters uh, of, this, uh, of this concept. Um, I have yet to see anyone who's or experienced anyone who's actually had any sort of negative experience on this um, whether it be business SA or uh, so far the Ghana community I have a lot more work to do there 
uh, particularly APA, uh, which I was probably most nervous about when I was approaching APA um, uh, around this concept. They have written to the Premier, they have put it in their, in their monthly gazette. They are completely behind this concept. Uh, so to be able to have an organisation like APA, but also APLA uh, behind this would just, would just be quite incredible. The City of Adelaide and the Deputy Lord Mayor have, have, have provided me some extremely positive um, um, uh, and, and, and encouraging, encouraging support uh, uh, behind this as well, both in media, um, but also just being here tonight. Uh, Bike SA, Running SA, uh, Athletics SA, you name it, every, every major interest group that's out there that is relevant to this has been, uh, has been behind it. I am grateful that Keith Conlon got mentioned a little bit earlier. Keith has rung me a couple of times uh, on this one, and he is um, he is an extremely passionate South Australian and very much behind um, the uh, the Adelaide Rainbow Circuit as well. Um, so I can't speak highly enough of the of the amount of support that I've had from the community and interest groups in this, to the extent now that we've got a, a, a social media. Uh, group which is starting pretty close to hitting the thousand uh, mark and uh, will uh, we'll, we'll go up quite quickly I think once we start to hit uh, uh, the next stages. Um, I've already spoken about the media piece there. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, sorry to put your face up there, but uh, thank you for that article. But uh, Radio Adelaide has been across this. We've got our social media campaign going. Uh, we've got our, our, our website going and, and various other things. Uh, in, in summary, um, the, the ARC, which we've called it, it, I'm not attached to that name, it may need to change, but it's, um, it, is, uh, it, seems to, uh, it seems to have a, a quite, a, quite a significant amount of gravity in the community at the moment. Um, it does encourage an active, healthy lifestyle for all South Australians. It is extremely unique. It is something which is uh, a very much a tourism experience um, that we could support in, in South Australia. It, it promotes the active sports tourism market, which pre, uh, sorry, prior to COVID was the most, it uh, was the largest um, uh, tourism market globally. Um, I, I'm a, a personally uh, um, a strong supporter of, of being considerate of our natural, our Aboriginal and our colonial heritage and being able to incorporate that into it. I think it provides a very unique vision for our parklands. Um, as much as um, we've spoken about a number of projects just previous to me coming on, um, this, this, this is something which I think is a lot more broader and a lot more iconic uh, for Adelaide. Thank you, Jason. I might stop you there and see if there's any questions from members as we have gone over time somewhat. Sorry, I didn't get the warning. Uh, right. yeah. I, I didn't put a bell on. Okay, <laughs> I, I have no idea how long 10 minutes is. <laughs> yes, Craig. Um, thank you for, for that, um, to, to the Chair. Just just um, a couple of quick, quick questions. Um, the surface treatment um, in various slides, some of them looked like it was sort of rubbly and others were sort of hard bitumen. Do you have a sense of what your prefer preference is? Oh, look, uh, the, the, the surface itself would, would need to be very considerate of both the runner in being um, sort of that low impact, but also the rider that would have that low rolling resistance mm -hmm. that's required. Um, um, I would I would probably look at um, taking this through more deeper, detailed business case development before, before, before commenting on what the surface should actually look like. Um, but it would be something that would need to be considerate of both runner and, and, and rider. Mm. That's, that's the best way I could describe it right now. And is the intention to sort of build on the current bike path that we're there? Very, very much so. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so to be able to adopt what's there at the moment, but to be able to provide a level of consistency um, around our parklands. The idea here, and the, and the reason I think that um, APA has got behind this so much is, is the fact that this would connect our parklands. So if we can do that in a way that is extremely consistent, um, I, I personally, from an icon, iconic perspective, I think that would be great. 
but to be able to say, so, okay, which is which is fully connected by 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 something, I think that it would just be absolutely brilliant. Sure, and just quickly the last one. Um, uh, um, it's probably more of a comment than a question, but just around the the Ghana connection. Just um, um, it's great that you've you've started those conversations, but I think from from my perspective, that would be um, a really really intent to um, our, our support for something like I, this. Yeah, I, I could not agree more. I spoke to Marty today. Uh, I believe he's part of the Adelaide City Council, um, and he's had some conversations. I am meeting with the reconciliation. Council and various other people. I've, I've spoken to people which I was able to get connection sure. with, yep. um, but they may not be the right groups. So uh, I know there's so much more work to be done there. That's why I was saying that I'm not attached to the name because we may need to we may need to change that. Um, the the reason for me personally was to look at the thing like the, uh, the the rainbow circuit is because that's what I was taught when I was a kid um, I understand that, that that dream time story and my children understand that dream, dream time story so it is something which is very uh, they can identify with whether or not that's relevant mm -hmm. is another question mm -hmm. and we need to make sure that we work through those pieces so I think I couldn't agree members any other questions if not, thank you, Jason, for your sorry, presentation tonight. Sorry, oh, sorry, Ben. Yeah. Um, quick one. And, and I love the juro hat. Uh, sorry, juro, but they haven't got the same same brand. <laughs> I feel like I put it on. Appreciate your your time and effort. And just picking up on, on one of Craig's questions, how important is the continuity and, and acknowledging there are a number of roads that cut through the parklands? How important is that that continuum of being able to either go under or over? Oh, oh under or over is not, not, not an issue at all. It's more about the fact to be able to, to, to create something which is um, which is consistent, mm -hmm. I think, around our parklands. So consistency more, more than continuity. Low bit. Okay. I guess I'm going to, if you stopped at a row and then kept going. Yeah, this is an interesting one, and it's a, it's, a, it's a question I've had with a number of people. Is is um, I, I I think the way that we're going to have to approach something like this is to be able to create something which is a vision in very much the long term. Okay, uh, um, so that means we're going to have to compromise on certain things. So to be able to get over hands at common. Yeah, yeah. I, I know where you're coming from there, Mr. Bounce. Like, okay, well, we may not be able to do that in the short term, and the expense of being able to put a bridge over the top of Anza Park would be significant. So, yeah, do we compromise on that for the time being? But at least we have a vision of where we want to go in the, in the longer term. That's 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 the concept. Yeah. I, I, I think it's worth following through. I think the idea of safe crossing points and connection points and, and giving that continuity that way might be a good step for you in, in, in building I agree. My ask to council and to this group is is I'm I'm just a citizen, you know, I'm trying to work out what well, the best way of navigating a way of funding a business case so we can uh, look mm -hmm. at exactly things like that. I'm grateful for the fact that I can work with Shanti and the team in being able to work through a business uh, a, a proposal that um, I think we need to do a lot more work to be able to work out what the, the sort of the cost benefit would be and being able to do all these different things. Stephanie? Well, mine's just a very quick comment, but the, the bridges across the river are already there. Hey, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Stephanie. Yeah, they are. They are. Uh, so, members, there are any questions? I'll just, just Wayne, briefly. And I just think, in, in addition to that, very much the intent of um, when this was brought to council was to get that process started. Um, uh, and the collaboration is key, which is why I think, particularly at this at this early stage, um, getting the input of the expert members of the APLA um, uh, board, uh, getting getting a feedback, getting your own creative juices flowing to see what sort of um, what sort of comes and hopefully there can be further collaboration down the track and with Jason and with the council. I think it's very much at concept stage at this point um, and obviously it, it is uh, 
taking to the next level the investment that's been done over many years for the Parklands Trail, um, uh, which has been very well utilised during this COVID-19 period. I think. So, um, but, uh, and I'm sad that uh, Jessica is not here tonight. Um, so I'm sure she'd have a lot to contribute as well. Um, so we we'll look forward to it because, you know, obviously business cars, we need to have a look at the data and what that investment would look like and over what period of time. Um, uh, and some some of those things that were in your presentation, I know have already been looked at through council, particularly things like luminescence on trails and um, and using recycled materials. Yeah. So it's a matter of how, like how all of these pieces right. come yeah. together. Yeah. So um, thank you. Unless there's any other burning questions, and if not, we'll move on. Just a mm -hmm. very quick one. I just suddenly thought. You know, earlier today we talked about whether we were happy with the big moves yep. section. Maybe this is something we could contemplate adding to the big moves. You know, long as part know, of the parklands management strategy. We can have a look at that. That would be amazing. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jason, for joining us this evening. Uh, members, that takes us to item eight on the agenda we have two reports for consideration this evening uh, the first is 8.1 uh, which is the Adelaide Parklands Authority annual business plan and budget 2020-2021 uh, Martin is there anything you want to talk to in terms of that report thank you Lord Mayor uh, this is a very basic business plan and budget it uh, facilitates the uh, core activities of APA. Uh, we've got a small provision in there, it's mainly for administrative support, we've got a provision in there for the community forum, uh, something for the for promotional work, should that occur, it's only a provisional amount, it's nothing uh, specific in mind for that money. Uh, legal advice is always occasionally needed, uh, course payment of sitting fees and insurance. Um, members, before I go into formal, I'll just invite any questions or comments and then we'll go into formal to go to the recommendation. So, Stephanie? Yeah, just a bit more illumination on the decision to, to shift the World Heritage Project from Apple to Council. That's really weird. That, that um, based on the fact that the, the scope of the World Heritage uh, proposal is, is beyond the park it includes the city grid as well and potentially other areas of South Australia so in that respect it goes beyond Apple's remit so we think it, it's, it's more comfortably with council. And it's just assumed it would still come through Apple's various stages. Apple would still be involved. Yep. Yep. As I was doing fun to go towards the one. Um, Deputy Law Mayor. Um, uh, just a quick question. I'm assuming the $15,000 for the conducting of the community forum is mostly to go towards promotion of said forum? It would go to the conducting of the forum. So we may have guest speakers, we may need to look at venues, promotion of it, etc. It should cost more of a grant to put on it. Little, little community meeting, I would have thought. Picnic? Mm. I'm, happy to, I'm happy to spend money promoting it it doesn't mean we have to spend 15000 It's an application. <coughs> well, I don't approve it now. So, what, I mean, can Martin can shed light on what is incorporated into that figure? Well, if it, if it was um, being held in the uh, parkland, for instance, you'd have to pay for a marquee, you'd have to pay for some catering, um, and all those associated things were made. Events don't come cheap. And, of a lot of uh, expenses you just don't envisage. Help. <laughs> I, have, I held a forum out in front of the Aquatic Centre outside and that was free, but... Um, uh, I don't think that's the sort of forum we're talking about. There's where... a lot of people there. Yes, but, yeah, yes, but I, I, just, I just think, think it's a lot of money that's... and I would encourage you, if you could do it in a, is it in a, as thrifty a way as possible, spend the rest of it on letting people know this happening. That's, that's all. Thank you. Members? Yeah, would you speak to the budget? Um, um, I'm sorry, I can actually just, if I could, Jason, if I could ask you and uh, Ms Henderson, if you would like to continue a conversation outside of the chamber. No Thank you. Uh, so 
Members, if there's no, well, I will actually ask for a mover and a seconder. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder. Thank you, Stephanie. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Stephanie? No, members? If not, I'll go back to move to sum up. Summed up. Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Uh, item 8.2. On our agenda this evening is um, change to your event footprint for Latin 2020 and 2021, COVID 19 response for events. Um, we have with us Noni Williams and Christy Anthony who are going to um, uh, respond to any questions that we have. Um, I'm just also going to advise the meeting that the agenda was published prior to the emergency management public activities number two, COVID 19 direction. 20 2020 being revoked and replaced by the Emergency Management Public Activities Number no. 3, COVID-19, Direction 2020, which came into effect at zero one hours <laughs> on Monday, the 29th of June. I was trying to say, I don't even know how to say that. Zero one one hour on the 29th of June, 2020. The recommendation has been revised as displayed on screen to reflect the new direction that defined public activities exceeding 1,000 people are required to hold a COVID management plan. Defined public activities of up to 1,000 are required to hold a COVID safe plan. And with that, I will go to Noni. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, members, the report um, is in front of you this evening for consideration is in relation to a request that we have received from Gluttony to change their site footprint for the remaining two years of their multi-year event licence, so that being for 2021 and 2022. Um, for your information, as part of the original approval through Council for the multi-year event licence, one of the conditions was that if there was a significant change to an event location, event footprint, operating hours, um, that that would be required to come back into uh, to APLA for consideration and also into Council for consideration and approval, hence why we're bringing that in this evening. The report also um, provides an overview um, in relation to our response to COVID-19 so that we will have hopefully have the ability to be more flexible and agile when working with our customers to enable them to return to the parklands. So depending on the COVID-19 restrictions that are in place, if an event needs to expand their event footprint or take out a couple of parklands to enable their event to occur, we would like to be able to have that flexibility. Melissa, I'll do the same. We'll be informal until we get to the recommendation. So please ask as many questions uh, as you wish. Uh, yeah, just, uh, I'm, I'm right in thinking that uh, the area looks not dissimilar to the um, existing footprint for 2020 by the time you kind of work your head around the overlay that's been provided. Through the Lord Mayor, yes, that's correct. It's about an additional thousand square metres um, and then also encompassing the lake in that footprint as well. So, Noni, the additional 1,000 includes the lake, doesn't it? Uh, through the Lord Mayor, no, that's not correct. Okay. The land use, so the land is a thousand square metres more. Okay, thank plus you. The lake. Did you have another question? No, absolutely. That, I think it's kind of interesting in terms of um, you know, bringing the lake in into um, a sort of tree area like that. And um, I like the fact that they've taken that into account and thought about how they might be able to, to um, use it. And I'd be interested to know any further about beyond what's been described in the document in terms of their intentions of incorporating the lake creatively in the, um, in the event. Thank you. Is there anything that you can add at this stage in terms of the incorporation of the lake? Uh, through the Lord Mayor, um, currently Daniel's thinking is very much around lighting projection um, and not physically using the lake. It's more about creating an experience so people enjoying the vista that is the lake um, and also retaining access to the lake for people um, to continue to enjoy. Thank you. Ben, did you have a question? And yeah. I'll go to 
Uh, thank you, Lord. And a couple of questions. So uh, the the change of footprint and the increased area is, is that because of social distancing and the need to logistically manage more people? Through the Lord Mayor, um, it's in response to it's twofold. It is in response, firstly, to the Quentin Keenahan increasing play space, mm -hmm. and the fact that um, that is now occupying a section of the site that mm -hmm. was occupied by Gluttony. So, to ensure that Gluttony can continue to provide the same offering that they have over the last few years, they're looking to to re configure mm -hmm. their site um, so that they don't lose a venue or, right. or, or change the experience that their customers have come to expect mm -hmm. to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And in terms of visitation, and I guess a, a bit of this is um, crystal ball gazing, but, but with travel restrictions and those sorts of things, if, if, if there is to be um, less overseas or possibly even interstate travel, do we still need to increase uh, have they considered that in terms of do they need a larger footprint? Is, are, we, are we likely to find ourselves in a situation where we might need a smaller footprint? Perhaps. Yeah. I mean, in response to COVID, it really is the million dollar question, yes. if I can yep. use that phrase um, right now. So we are continuing to work with SA Health Events SA and the events on what their footprints might end up at. But in respect to gluttony and what's being proposed here, regardless of the travel restrictions, etc., they are anticipating that to deliver their event that they're hoping for in 2021, this is the layout that they would okay. require. Uh, uh, sorry, just two, two more. And, and I don't know, are we able to put attachment A on the screen or is that? Okay, I'll ask a slow question there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I guess, and this is um, just looking at that, that overall arrangement and, and how it sits within the park and I guess some questions around that balance between when it's in event mode, um, accepting all the other pressures that are on but also then maintaining, I guess, the day-to-day -day role for the parklands, um, conscious of the chaos that's there as well. Um, so if it's not coming up, my, my first question was, in terms of the island that sits within there, that seems to be included in the Glossony footprint, is that right? Um, yes, that's correct. Right. Is that, and, and is, that, is that a fundamental for them? I, I'm just thinking in terms of the, the general public movement and circulation, whether that needs to be there and and or to the extent that the, the access across it through the bridges, whether that could be maintained if they need staging and loading for that, that activation uh, of, of the, lake, the lake. Through, sorry, through, through the Lord Mayor. Um, the intention by Gartney and also in collaboration with our internal um, stakeholders is to retain access across the public paths. Mm -hmm. um, there will, will be times when the build is or bumping is occurring where they will need to close certain sections purely for safety. Mm -hmm. It isn't in event mode uh, or operating. They will retain public access. So the gates will be open, thoroughfare can occur, and that's usually during the peak, um, peak hour uh, when cyclists and pedestrians are moving through mm -hmm. those areas and at other times they enable that with security to ensure that people passing through can still access the sites. It's only on some occasions that they will be required to close fully, but people, that's due to safety. Really. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, and that, that's important. And, and then just lastly, sorry, promise, um, <laughs> that, that eastern extent that's sort of pushing towards, you've got the avenue running diagonally there, that, that's now extended further east than the original red zoning. Um, again, if, if you're looking at movement coming from sort of Kent Town through the parklands, are they still able to move efficiently to both the kiosk and then into the city um, during gluttony? Uh, through the Lord Mayor, in relation to that specific pathway, um, that was closed, par partially closed last year, or well, I say last year, this year. Um, for that event, and then we created an alternative cycling pedestrian path around um, so that people could mm -hmm. um, still traverse through that area. Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> I think there's a delay in our, in our transmission. Um, Deputy Lord Mick. But for that glitch in the matrix. Yes. Um, look, uh, yeah, just looking at it, can you walk us through how the accessibility is going to be maintained? Yeah. That's um, that, including the um, cycle path. You know, the, the parkland. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's that's where I'm struggling to reconcile where the declared event site for the for the car race thingy um, meets the, the new fence line for gluttony. That's what I'm and I mean it's it's nice in principle to keep the lake sort of half accessible. People want to still go down there, but if they can't reach it, um, then that's that's an issue and it just makes that that time we've kept a tiny little ceremonial slither of parkland for, you know, 1.3 million South Australians that aren't going to gluttony or the Superloop. So, so the, through the Lord Mayor, um, so the final site plan is still in a work in progress, but all of the discussions um, with gluttony and based on the practice from this year, they're all of the access points into so there are various accent points throughout the event footprint. They, uh, those gates are kept open. So there is signage saying slow down, etc. And then they, so that pedestrians and cyclists can still enter the event site. So they do not build over pathways. Last year they, uh, last I say last year, this year's event, the pathway that I previously mentioned, which comes from Dakota Terrace along, that was shut because they did have to build a venue over the top of that path yep. and an alternative path was put in that yep. around. So we're just finalising with Gluttony as to where that venue will go with the change in this footprint. Um, and if that is the same scenario, then they will build an alternative path in consultation with Shanti's team um, to ensure that people can still access through to the city. Yeah, but the, the gates are always open all the time. Yep, is that the, yep that's correct. To fix the fence. Yeah, the but gates are open, the signage. Okay, members, I will ask you just to remember to use your microphones because we are um, recording. So, yeah, thank I, you, Stephen. I just wanted to, it's all the same concerns, but the, well, the, the other key one is that parklands trade. So that, that's a different one. That's access around the parklands and how is that treated, is that built over. And also the length, because I did notice like, this year that, um, you know, that I, I always thought that there was always access and then I noticed one bike ride that there wasn't and now I realise it's the setup and the yeah. shutdown period. So, you know, how do you contain that? And, uh, and my final question is always about cars parking, you know, so how do you manage and contain cars parking, you know, during, you know, as a, those car parks and how do you limit that? Um, through the Lord Mayor, so in relation to the Parklands Trail and those paths, um, we, they do remain open, um, except for at those periods of time where they need to be closed for build, um, which is purely a safety for both the contractors on site but also for the public. Mm -hmm. um, in relation to the management of vehicles and vehicle movements, um, any event is required to submit a site care management plan and as part of that um, they need to address how they are managing those vehicles. In respect to gluttony, they actually build in sections. So they start um, the build so they don't come in, fence the entire site and then shut it off. We've worked really hard with them so they build in stages to try and retain as many of the pathways um, so they can close one section off, open the other section up, etc. Um, and also they're limited to only a couple of essential vehicles on site throughout the period. Yeah. Bumping is different, that's taken care of as part of the site care management plan, but during the actual event mode, a limited yeah. number of vehicles. And one more if I may. Uh, the style of the fencing, is there any encouragement being made to improve or experiment with something besides the black plastic on the construction fencing? Through the Lord Mayor, I knew you were going to ask me that question. <laughs> um, we, last year, um, we worked with Gluttony to ensure that the sort of amount of black plastic was minimal and they, they did have scrim but it was 
promoting the shows that were occurring within the venue, which we thought was more aesthetically pleasing than just the black screen. However, there is a safety and security requirement um, to actually have fairly high fence um, for the duration. But we are continuing as part of our event infrastructure project to look at other fencing opportunities within event sites. And I just, I never can get my head around why it's a safety issue when I look at a Writers Week every year and there's barely any fence at all and thousands of people attend and people drink and all of that. I just don't get why it's an issue to have an opaque tall fence. Um, through the Lord Mayor, there's a, a number of um, sort of considerations, the duration of the event um, and the style of the event. Also a lot of the back of house um, um, equipment, generators, etc., is located on the sort of perimeter of the event site. So it's challenging to have that, you know, with very low fencing. Um, and also because it's the sheer volume of people or the license capacity for the event also. So liquor licensing determines somewhat um, the fencing requirements as well. Um, we've got several new members on that, but can you just um, talk to us about remediation of the site? Mm -hmm. Through the Lord Mayor. Um, so for any event that is utilising a parkland or other public space within the city for their event, um, a requirement of their approval is that they're responsible for remediation. So we work very closely with them to help support with the management and care of the parklands. As part of their site care management plan, they need to address a number of factors around, as I said, site build, um, care of the parklands during their occupation, watering, etc. But all events, as I said, are responsible for paying for the remediation um, of the site once they finish their event um, occupation. And um, uh, just in terms of the changes that we made to remediation of site over the last few years, Gluttony's performed quite well in terms of their care of the site? Uh, they certainly have, I'll throw the log there. Yes, they have. Um, Gluttony has undertaken a number of measures to try and protect the parkland as much as possible. Um, they've employed throughout, during their bump in through to bump out, um, a full time, I'm going to say gardener, but they, they refer to him as the grass man who actually monitors the watering, um, how vehicles, like when they're in build mode, that if they don't stick to the plan, you know, there are ramifications for that. They've built decking so that the, the water can still. Um, the turf can still be watered during their site um, occupation and they work very closely with our horticulture team to ensure that the parkland is being um, monitored. There's regular, in fact, twice weekly inspections with um, my team and with the um, team from Gluttony to ensure that the site is looking in good condition and their remediation bill has done significantly over the last few years. Um, which is great sign. Craig, you had some questions. Oh, did you have to this one afterwards? Yeah, just a, a quick one. Um, thank you for the clarification around the public access and that sort of the opening up of the, those pathways. Is there ever an instance in terms of density or numbers where security guards need to close off access points? Um, um, just, yeah, I suppose I'm wondering why you know, in terms of that, that fencing you'd imagine one of the reasons is to control the numbers and not overwhelm. So if, and, and if, if that's the case, then what's the impact in terms of public access or, th or thoroughfare? Through the Lord Mayor, yes, there are incident, incident times when, <laughs> <laughs> um, when the site needs to be fully shut, and that is particularly during event mode. Um, this year, Gluttony did reach their capacity the, the licence capacity um, on quite a few occasions and the site has to be closed, one for their licensing and the safety of the patrons that are within the venue. So at, at that point, then any, I mean, it's usually really late at night as well. Um, so the security on those points try to direct people in other, in, around the site. 
Thank you. So in terms of an alternative around that central area through the parklands, I'm just thinking if someone is being directed elsewhere, um, there, there, there is an alternative path somewhere? Um, through the Lord Mayor, uh, yes, they would just be directed to join one of the other paths that is surrounding the site. I think it's fair that um, part, part of what the, the teams do is really focus on that access. So they're good questions because that is part of the assessment uh, on that uh, lease and licence to make sure that we can continue access, um, particularly from where we know that they come through on bike paths and, and pedestrian pathways. Um, and uh, that is you know, part of the trick during the period of time when these parks are all being used is how we continue to make sure that there's adequate and uh, visible, easily accessible um, uh, routes through the parklands. Um, so I think good questions to ask. Um, Rob and then Stephanie. Um, yeah, just to that point, um, I, I guess given that Gluttony's occupied uh, a large part of that site previously, I'd just be interested to know what level of um, problem or complaint there may have been in the past in relation to access issues. Um, through the Lord Mayor, for this year's event, we received one complaint and the previous year we received two. Um, and I just might add that in addition to the on-site management in the lead up to the event, um, City of Adelaide and Gluttony really do promote the fact that the build is happening, these are the times. So it's a real awareness around um, any impacts that may occur um, to um, the paths and access through that parkland. So we've come very much from an educative approach. Thank you, Stephanie. Did you have another question? This is probably not unnecessary detail, but uh, with this question that it may get shut off you know, or whatever, whether it's COVID or security. That is the border in that where it extends in the, um, you know, where it practically touches the uh, the car race boundary. Does that, you know, it's just an obvious question. Does that need to go so close or can we create some decent sort of space around that? Is a, you know, is that something you could look at or is it all too late or? Through the Lord Mayor, no, it's not too late. Um, we, you know, obviously um, the event organiser is still very much in planning stage, so we can take that um, feedback to him and request that that fence line be it brought in. It seems to be a natural mm -hmm. outlet. Sure. <clears throat> Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, just Steph took the words right out of my mouth there. Is that, so when, if we pass this recommendation, you, you can still work, you know, towards that aim without needing to amend or anything? Uh, through the Lord Mayor. Sorry, the um, through the Lord Mayor, yes, Deputy Lord Mayor, we certainly can um, address that with the event organiser. Um, and, you know, it may be that this might shrink a little bit just depending on the final layout and the structures that they get. So we also may find when we see it in perspective of size mm -hmm. that that's three metres wide. Or, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's very hard when we've got a texture outline. Just I guess what you've heard very clearly from Ampler is the desire to make sure that there is a, a, an easily accessible pathway through there, um, and particularly at that juncture where the two, or the declaration and the, the footprint of God need me. So that would be great. Um, members, I'll now go, now go to the recommendation. Um, so if I could have the recommendation on screen. Um, and I will loo, uh, look for a mover and a seconder. Thank you, move Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Alex, did you wish to speak? No, Rob, did you wish to speak? Um, to, to it, the it's more by way of a question, and that's just I, I wonder to what degree point three is actually within our remit. That is, that we support not charging additional parkland site fees. Do we normally have a role in recommending anything in relation to site fees? Uh, we do for leases and licensing. Yes, so we can make a recommendation around that, which will then go to a recommendation, then goes to council for their um, 
discussion. Thank you. Members, would anybody else like to speak to the recommendation before us? If not, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Um, just a very quick comment. Uh, I think it's very good that um, people are looking to expand their event operations, especially at this time. Um, and we obviously saw this week uh, the uh, overall contribution that the, the fringe and associated events made to the state, and um, it grew. Um, so thank God, COVID happened when it did. Uh, well, we shut everything down when we did. Um, and still save lives. Uh, so it's very, it's very promising, and that's good. And I think they're very good operators there as well, and that's fantastic. Um, and it's good for us to be able to support them. Um, my heart does ache when we look at the the patchwork that is Ryman Park, though, uh, particularly at this time of the year. You know, it's got the scar of um, the O barn, um, uh, obviously the site of the Adelaide Bowls Club. Um, and then you know, this event space and in the middle of it all, the lake, which is dirty, full of duck feces and doesn't really work. Um, I, lo I love the lake. I still go down there and I've rode on there, as I, I think I've said before. But um, uh, yeah, I think the, the delivery of the Rhyme Master Plan can't come soon enough. Um, and I think that when it's realised, it'll help events like this bump in and out a lot quicker and the community access and all of that stuff. Um, uh, so in context of that, very happy to support such an expansion. Um, even if it will uh, take a little bit away from community access, I'm hoping that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. Thank you, members. To the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you, Nani and Christy. Uh, members, any other business? We have no questions on notice, or motions on notice. Are there any questions without notice or motions without notice? If not, um, uh, and again, uh, if there are any other matters, we have a, a, an item for discussion for them. Any other general matters that members wish to put forward at this point? If not, I will declare the meeting closed and advise that the next meeting is scheduled for the 6th of August. Um, and look forward to seeing you all before then. And I'll see you at that meeting then as well. Thank you.